part 12. So we finished off after Pandemonium and next up is Brain Pants. And uh, for Brain Pants you want to kill, first thing you want to do to set up for Brain Pants is to kill Redas. And the problem is that Redas still might have a Reflect on if you were you were fast with the Pandemonium fight and you were late to cast the Reflect on uh, on Redas. That's why you want to um, use the Immobilize and Reflect uh, on Redas as soon as um, as soon as you are be are past all the enemies. As I also I think I didn't mention that the Immobilize on Redas is so that uh, he will not break the Confuse on Pandemonium, if that was not obvious. But anyway, um, you want to kill him by casting Fyraga on him with Penelo. So there I had to wait for a little bit for the Reflect to wear off. Um, there you can, you can see right here it says that he has reflect off so i it 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 uh alternates between immobilize and reflect so i just had to wait until it said two immobilizes in a row and then i told penal to use Fuaraga. but yeah you want to you want to uh cast a reflect as soon as possible or well immobilize and reflect as soon as possible but the immobilize obviously have to has to be first so i was actually thinking today that you might might be able to do it a little bit earlier or use the immobilize earlier like maybe at the second to last chimera even i don't know either way uh here you want to use dispel on penelo and then ref or then immobilize penelo um and why the reason why you immobilize penelo is similar to uh to Gary Wagon, we want to be immobilized spawning, and we're using Penelo so that uh, Penelo can keep Penelo can keep, uh, and you want Penelo to be in your party so that she will get XP from the Brain Pants, uh, and eventually level up to twenty eight, uh, which is uh, where she gets uh, another magic, another point of magic power. And uh, Penelo usually still has Reflect off on. It might wear off if you are a little bit slower, but even even if it even even if it wears off, you want to do, uh, you want to use Dispel because uh, if you were to use Immobilize immediately, Immobilize is an aggressive magic, so uh, Bosch would take out his weapon, and then you would have you would have this weapon out when you open this door. And and uh, this door, uh, and then if you open the door with uh, Bosch's weapon out, you will see an animation where Bosch takes out, t uh, puts away his weapon, then opens the door, and then takes the weapon out again. Whereas now I can just open the door without the extra animations. And then uh, after the dispel is in action, you tell Penelo to. Uh, cast immobilize and um, once the once uh, you see Bosch starting this uh, animation for uh, taking the weapon out uh, you want to immobilize despawn these chimeras uh, that you can see on the minimap you can do it as soon you can do it as soon as um, you see them you see both of them on the minimap uh, trust me there are two of them but they are just in the blob and you have to do it at the latest when you cross this, uh, or before you cross this, uh, do um, I don't know what to call this, but this line over here. And also you have to take in this, in the pre in the, in this room, you have to, first you have to put Penelo here. Uh, you have to run to this corner first before you do the dispel and immobilize so that Penelo is far enough away from these guys to get despawned. And uh, you also want to take this path instead of this path, because if you take this path, uh, you might despawn one of the brain pants you have to kill. 
But yeah, the brain pants, the idea is that Fran will cast death, which underflows. He will cast death on Bosch. Bosch has the mirror mail, so it reflects from Bosch to the uh, brain pants. And that is for two reasons. One, sometimes brain pants have a reflect on, so uh, use reflecting the death from Bosch goes uh, by that uh, reflect. And second, second reason is that um, second reason is that um, that way Fran will not get too close to the brain pants. And um, also, this is where you need the elixirs I've been talking about. And and uh, I've been and uh, ideally you have four elixirs or a mega. Or elixirs and or mega elixirs. Um, so co combined four of elixirs and mega elixirs for this part. And that is so you can skip a menu. But if you have only three, you have only three elixirs and mega elixirs, uh, you will have to do a menu. And in that menu, you would get uh, the following licenses uh, for Fran. So Fran should have a uh, green magic six, which is this one. So what Fran would get is white magic seven, white magic six, and channeling. Those three licenses. Uh, also in that in that case, she would have previously had to gotten these licenses for this quickening, because otherwise she probably doesn't have enough LP to afford. Uh, these three, th these three licenses, and that is so that uh, she can get the channeling, which uh, reduces the cost of death by three. So in that case, death would uh, death would cost twenty seven MP instead of thirty MP that it does uh, without the channeling. And that is so you can get away with only three elixirs. Uh, and one eater. But if if Fran has good enough starting M starting MP, then you actually don't need the uh then you don't need the uh eater. You can get away with just if if Fran's starting MP was fifty one or above, she would have hundred and fifty three or above uh MP right now. And uh if that happens, uh, then you can get away with only three elixirs. So, uh, you immobilize this spawn the chimeras, you use death with Fran on Bosch to kill the brain pants, and um, whenever a Fran runs out of MP, you throw an elixir on him with Bosch or Penelo. So, Fran has the death gambit. Uh, sometimes it's actually faster to manually cast the death instead of using the gambit. Uh, you can do whole brain pants with manual deaths if you want to, but uh, it all gambiting death is only five seconds, and uh, it's much easier than uh, using manual casts. But yeah, uh, so how you do it, you have to get close enough to the brain pants for it to be activated. And then, uh, so this for this first brain pan, you run you run to about where I, where I did, and then you back up off a little bit. And the goal is to not activate this brain pan until Fran starts loading for the, nec uh, for the next uh, death. So, so now um, you can see when they are activated, uh, there are two ways to tell. Uh, first, you can see their HP bar, and uh, second is you can see them as a red dot on the minimap. Yeah, you then you turn off Fran's gambits after killing these two and wait for the bridge to spawn. You can pick up the treasures 
uh, or the loot from Brain Pants if you really want to. Um, I usually I don't pick up these first drops because I want I I actually want the chain levels this time. So I'm I ignore these first two drops even though they don't cost me any time to pick up. But later on, when there are drops that will not take cost me any time to pick up, uh, I pick those up. But you can pick up more if you want to. It's only just uh, money for the uh, final bosses, so it's only exposures you would get. So this here is another. Um, actually, this is very precise. Um, very precise uh, despawn because you want you need to despawn these chimera brains that are ahead, but you don't want to despawn the brain pan that is uh, onwards. So you have to like hit this sort of pillar and then do the despawn and then continue like that. And then the brain pan over here should spawn. And so you again turn on France Gambit. And then turn the gambit off. This one actually is one of those cases where I think it's faster to uh, do it manually. Or it, it would be better to do manually because that one is okay to do. Um, but if you don't want to bother with that, just do all, everything with gambits. Uh, here, you again, there are two, two brain or two chimera brains ahead. As soon as. Um, as soon as you, uh, you the death and death uh goes away from the. From, as soon as the death is no longer, uh, in this uh like in action, so it disappears. The 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 text disappears, from here. Uh, then then you can despawn these chimeras without uh, losing any time. And uh, then. Uh, you see that the bridge is not complete yet. You need uh, four segments and you only have one so far. So uh, you want to kill this brain pan first. Because if you kill him last, then you have to wait for the bridge to spawn after you kill it. But if you kill him first and then go kill the other two, uh, you, don't, you don't have to wait. So again, activate it and then pull back a little bit. But not too much. You have to you have to be careful. You don't run away too far away from the brain pants, or otherwise the uh, you will be out of the, out of range for the for the brain pan. Yeah, yeah. Then ju you just wait for Fran to start uh, charging death again, and you run. And you can outrun Fran, so uh, Fran will not get the death off, uh, assuming you are not fleeing. So you can just run, and then once you re once you activate the brain pan, then you can turn back, and Fran will immediately cast death, and it should work. So now I have to elixir, and if and this is the point that uh, if you if you were if you had only three elixir, you, if you had only three elixirs, you would eat her here instead of elixiring. Um, but if you have, if you had the, uh, 51 starting MP on Fran, then you actually don't have to use any item here and Fran will have enough, uh, MP to do another death, uh, assuming you picked up the channelings. And, um, uh, then Fran can use another death here and you can save the, uh, eater, but here, I have to uh, I have to do use the elixir, and here you can actually you can activate it and then hide behind this pillar so he can't see you but you're still close, uh, still close enough, and as soon as the death goes into action, you can turn off Fran's gambits and switch your party party leader to Fran. Uh, for a tiny little warp, like you see, this is a very minimal warp you do here. Uh, but you have to be very careful that you don't switch your party member to Penelo because um, that would despawn the brain pan and that's not what you want to do. Anyways, 
anyway, you continue with uh, Fran as the leader for a little bit. Uh, you can pick up the treasure here if you want to, if it drops. Um, otherwise, just run away. And uh, don't activate your gambits like a dumbass like I did. And then you want to ha set your cursor on time magic for another immobilize. And you can have uh, Bosch throw potions at himself to keep his HP up. And here you have to stop to do the immobilize because the otherwise Penelo will run forward. Just like in the in gear wagon, uh, you have to stop here. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise Pinello will run forward and be too close to immobilize these Chimera brains. And he can't or she she's too clo close immediately anyway, so you sort of have to run past the Chimera brains and hope that they don't use Ember Breath on you. If they do... Uh, and the reason why we run with Fran here is that uh, the Chimera brains, they take a little... They have a little animation you can see here. Uh, that animation. And while they're doing that animation, you usually run past them and then Bosch will be the closest to them when they actually choose their target. And uh, they will target Bosch, so they won't hit Fran. That's the, that's the idea why uh, we are running with Fran. So you run, this is also very specific. Uh, you run he, right, he, right to this corner and that is so that these both Chimera Brains are now far enough away from Penelo to be despawned. And there's another set of Chimera Brains somewhere around there. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly where they are, but if you do it somewhere else, if you would, were to do it somewhere else, they would not get despawned, but in this case they do. So you switch the leader to Penelo, and then you switch the leader to Bosch. Uh, like, you switch the leader to Penelo to despawn, and then you switch leader to pa Bosch, who conveniently happens to be at a nice spot to uh, carry on. And then, uh, then there's the next brain pan. You want to activate gambits around when you have a, uh, you have you are at the top of the stairs like this. I did it a little bit late, but whatever. I had to wait for a little bit. Uh, then you want to wait in this doorway until Fran starts casting another death, and then you run to this brain pan. And then you want to flee. Uh, you don't need to turn off gambits here, ju just flee. And then once you reach, uh, again, once you reach the top of the stairs, you uh, release the flee, and this time you actually turn off the gambits. Uh, then you run forward. Sometimes these two brain pans that were here, uh, sometimes they don't spawn. Usually only one of them spawns, but this time two of them spawned. If only one of them spawns and he is about here uh, on the map, uh, then I usually don't bother despawning them or him. Uh, but this time, uh, this time the other brain pan was like right over here or something, so I decided to despawn. Even if they fo start following you, they usually give up before the uh, next brain pan, but you do lose a little bit of time if they do follow you. But you also lose some time if you despawn, so it's whatever. They usually give up on about here. But yeah, anyway, you want to, you want to uh, turn the gambit off on again and have Fran gas death and be ready to elixir. Uh, if you have three elixirs, uh, the uh, the places where you use the elixirs uh, is a little bit different because uh, because you would have the channeling and uh, twenty seven, so channeling um, makes the cost of death smaller, so you would run out of MP at different points. But otherwise, the strat is the same. Um, and yeah, then you do that. Those drops, all of these three drops can be picked up without losing any time because you're waiting for this bridge to spawn anyway. So pick those up and uh, once you reach the bridge, uh, despawn the chimeras that are on the other side of it. And then keep running forward.
and uh, make sure your cursor is on time magic again. And this time you don't have to stop, you can just run while you tell uh, her to cast Immobilize. And now here I'm doing manual deaths, but you can use Gambits if you want to. The nice thing about using manual death is you don't, after after this you don't have to uh, you don't have to turn off your gambits. That's the advantage. And then after right, let's go back um, again. You kill that brain pan, and again once this death message here uh, goes away, you can uh, despawn these next chimeras. And this there's also a brain pan over here. That will get all, that will get despawned as well by this, uh, which is why uh, we go we go and kill this brain pan over here as well here first. Again, I'm using manual, but you can use uh, you can use gambits if you want to. Uh, so the chimeras respawn once you go there, but this time you shouldn't despawn them because otherwise you will despawn this brain pan again. And uh, it's just a loop, so you just have to. Uh, they they hardly ever see you when you go here, so it's fine. And then um, kill this one. This one I kill with gambits because it's faster, I think, in this situation. And then uh, here you can see there's a didar. And uh, once you see this didar, it's like a brain pan with a red flame. As soon as you are about here, and you, like, this is, my cue is that when I see this, uh, when I see this enemy, but uh, you can do it a little bit earlier too. But as long as you do it around here, it uh, you should despawn, so that you get rid of this Didar, there's a brain pan here you get rid of, and this, you get rid of this Chimera, and the other Chimera, and uh, that is the thing. Now, here's a very trolly enemy called uh, Arrow Knight. Sometimes he's here, usually he's a little bit further, so he won't be a problem. But this time I have to wait a little bit for that Arrow Knight to go away, because he can't be despawned and he hits very hard, so I really don't want to get noticed by him. But I just waited for him to go a little bit further so he wouldn't see me, and then I killed the Brain Pan that's behind here. You can see it on the minimap, but you can't see it right now because, well, I just know that he's there. And yeah, you can pick his drop as well if, uh, if, uh, without wasting any time, that is. And here, uh, you can see on the minimap there are two Chimera brains, and you want to despawn them, but you can't, you can't despawn them until you are at least at this point, unfortunately. And unfortunately, when you despawn them, you also spawn, or you also despawn a brain pan that would spawn right here. So that's a little bit annoying, but oh well. So for the next bridge, uh, you need to kill ten brain pans, and there are only seven brain pans around. So you have to kill at least uh, three brain pans twice. But there are a couple of ways to go about this. And uh, as you can see, Pen I'm trying to... I'm delaying the elixir because Fran is almost at 30 MP, but... And then I screwed up a little bit. So that was a little bit annoying, but uh, yeah, I got the... Usually you don't want to... If you have the if you have only three elixirs, then then you really want to do stuff like that. But with four elixirs, I really shouldn't have uh, tried to mess. I I should have just used the elixir before that brain pan. But I was so close; it was annoying me. And then Franz uh, attack gambit activated, which was also very annoying. But anyway, you killed that brain pan. Then you kill this brain pan, and you kind of want to keep an eye on your, um, 
high on your in-game time or your split your timing uh timing broke timer program because uh it takes a little while for the brain pants to respawn uh it's something something between a minute and minute and a half it it also varies a little bit we think so um when you kill him kill him there's he spawns after a minute or a minute 30 and you want to kill the you want to kill both of these guys again so you kill the those two and then you you flee because um and you flee and you release your flee once you're about here and you go right there's there's this brain pan and the one brain pan you saw over in that corner but actually going here activates this brain pan, which is a little bit weird. They want to go about, you want to go around here, uh, to about here. And that way this brain pan is close enough to get hit. And this brain pan will not be activated yet. So you kill that one and then you wait and then you kill the second one by going to where the first brain pan was. And pick up the drop if he drops anything. And now because we have to wait anyway. Uh, for the for these two and actually these two as well you want to kill both of them again all of them again uh you can pick up this these items while because we are gonna have to wait anyway for them to respawn so meanwhile penelo runs penelo's immobilize will wear off and she will run back but that's fine uh you want to wait a little bit like if, if you do this very fast she might runs she might get the at attention of those uh, chimera brains but ideally you will run back uh you will run back so in in such a timing that penelo uh will penelo will not get the attention of the chimera brains but will uh, will activate this brain pan here and um this time i was a little bit too slow for that because uh i because of what happened with the one brain pan where i did where i didn't use elixir but it's not a big deal you can just go and activate it but the ni nice thing about the brain this brain pan if if the if it was already activated uh i would only have to run to around uh here and have have fran starting start to cast start to charge death very sooner or a lot sooner so i wouldn't have to, but now that uh, he is not activated i have to run all the way down there to activate him and sometimes that will then bosch will get the attention of these chimera brains and they will start following you which is annoying like what happens here like i would i got too close to the chimera brains and now they're following me and they are targeting penelo but that's fine the chimera brains they use they're usually fi fine uh they will stop following you around here the one is still following but uh he is not targeting me so as soon as i stop he should stop as well either way you want to be fleeing until you are about around this close to this brain pan and then cast have fran cast death on him and then there's this one so there's this brain pan and there are these chim there's two chimeras here the other one is not on the map right now but the other one is fairly close there so what i do is i kind of judge whether the chimera is too close if the chimera is too close i'm just gonna uh ignore this brain pan and kill all of the four brain pans uh in the previous area again uh, but if if this brain pan is if the chimera brain is in a nice position then i just kill uh, this one and like this but if, if the chimera is annoying don't bother with it just uh you just then you just have to wait here a little bit longer and uh so now i i judge that enough time has passed for these brain pans to have respawned and so i go here and i have frank as death and because death costs 30 mp friend will have 4 mp after uh she's done with the death so i'm readying elixir with the penelo to cast on fran 
and I was actually too fast and the um I was too fast and the other brain pan over there did not spawn so I have to I have to run back to uh I have to run back to around the here to respawn the other brain pan as well so this definitely was not the smoothest brain pans but oh well but yeah once you once you're done with that um you will kill at least one of these two brain pans if you if you skip the one over there uh then you will have to kill a second brain then you have to kill both of these but if you kill the only if you uh if you killed that one then only one killing one is enough Um, but you anyway you would don't want him to hit you so that's why i went a little bit around and i had to wait for the bridge anyway and then before leaving the screen you want to have penelo immobilize herself for the last screen so in the last screen there's only one bridge and that requires only three segments and there are a lot of brain pans here uh so you have a lot to choose from uh, so, but these first two are really convenient, so kill them. And I'm doing some manual shenanigans again. And as you can see, Penelo is now level 28. Which is the go which was the goal. And the reason why you level up Penelo and not Ash is because Penelo has immobilized and Ash doesn't. So Penelo can be used to immobilize this spawn these guys. And you can't get both Penelo to 28 or and Ash to 27. If you could. Um you could then uh you would want to do that but um uh, usually at least i never have enough i i hardly have enough L, uh, exp to level penelo up to 28 uh and ash doesn't get uh ash gets one magic point at 27 but she doesn't get any at 28. Uh, so leveling up to... You can get either a magic point for Ash or magic point for Penelo. But... Or magic point of magic power for Ash or point of magic power for Penelo. And... Uh, but you can't get one for both. So... Because Penelo has the immobilized, that's why we use her. So yeah, this is the third and last... Uh, Brain pan we kill. There's total of thirty. If you were keep if you were looking at paying attention to the chain, uh, for the ten bridge you have a you need a chain of twenty seven. So after after killing the last brain pan, you just run past everything. Uh, there's no need to despawn the the rest of the enemies because it Fran is no longer used in this well in Pharos. So. Uh, it doesn't matter if she dies. And then here's the bridge. And then you just run. Run past all the enemies. There's another arrow knight. But he usually does not get an attack off. So it's fine. Just run away and open the door. So once you get here, uh, you want to switch back to your full main party, so bring out Ash. And because Ash is reflected still, you want fresh reflects, and uh, so you want to dispel Ash and then reflect Ash and Penelo. You can do the little trick I did, but a trick, trick where you first dispel Ash, then tell Penelo to cast reflect on herself, and then tell Ash to reflect 
uh, the new Talash to reflect herself. But it doesn't really matter, so that, that trick doesn't really save anything. You can you can also you can just as well like reflect in this next room. But yeah. Uh but yeah, then you have you want your um uh, arcane magic cursor to be unconfused and you want your main cursor to be on fire aga. Um so the next fight is Slit. Slit is very easy. Uh, it's just two rounds of Fireaga and he's dead. So how do you, how you do it is you Penelo still has the Fireaga Gambit because we never gave Penelo an Aeroga Gambit. And uh, how the fight goes is Penelo you turn off Penelo on Penelo's Gambit right before the fight. Then immediately at the fight you tell Ash to cast Fireaga. On on main party, on well anyone in the party, then you tell Bosch to cast Confuse on Slit. Um, and then you tell Ash to cast Fireaga on party again, and that's the whole fight. And Slit Slit might get an attack off before the Confuse lands, but uh, it's whatever it's. He deals about 700 damage, so make sure you have at least that much HP before you enter the fight. Then after the fight, what you want to do is, uh, with Penelo, you dis first you dispel Ash, and then you dispel Penelo herself, just like the trick I I did uh, previous in the previous room, or before the before the fight. So it, as soon as the dispel goes into action, queue up the second dispel and that way she can get two dispels off uh in the first in the first room. Doesn't really matter unless Bosch is uh, unless Bosch is low on L HP and you have to cure Bosch. Otherwise it doesn't you can also you can do the dis second dispel in the next room as well, just as well. Uh then you want to do this menu where you remove uh Bosch's mirror mail. Uh, that is so that Bosch can cast Protect on himself later, or for the next dungeon. Because now we're getting to the point where enemies hit so hard that you want Protect on when you run past enemies, or otherwise they would just deal a lot of damage. So here you can heal Bosch to full, and as I mentioned earlier, you can use the second dispel here as well, uh, if you don't need to cure Bosch with both girls. Then you touch the dev device, make sure you touch this device and not any of the other devices. Uh, this is the pink one and it gets rid of your minimap. So uh, you want to pay close attention to which way you run in this uh, next bit. And uh, in this room you want to protect Bosch and reflect the girls. That's in protect this for this uh, run and uh, reflect this for the uh, upcoming fight. You want to reflect early, but uh, if if you tend to take too long with this uh, reflect setup, uh, by all means reflect later. Like this reflect stuff is really tight, and it's it's the purpose is that uh, reflect would wear off right. After the after the fight ends, and if you keep if you keep having reflect run out, then just uh, find a place to cast reflect that works for you. Um, then you want to do a menu where you remove Penelo and Ash and Penelo from your party and equip the mirror mail back on Bosch, and then run past the enemies. So there are a couple of enemies. Crusaders are not too bad, as you can see, they deal about 600 damage with uh, Protect on. So you can easily tank three hits from them. So that's fine. But the one enemy you have to uh, watch out for are the Reavers. And the Reavers sometimes they spawn with Bravery on. And if they have Bravery on, they can deal like 1000 damage with a single hit, which is why I'm using a high potion here. I also should have used the high potion earlier because that guy spawns. 
and now he got an attack off. I guess they can deal that much damage as well, so... That was a little bit annoying. But yeah, I'm just I'm still using high potions because I had ex had I had so many extra high potions in this run. So I'm trying to save the X potions. Uh if you don't have any high potions, just use X potions. X potions heal for twenty four hundred with all the uh H all the potion lores. But yeah, just follow the path I took and you're good to go. Here you can either take you can take either route here, but this is slightly faster, I think. And here's one of these reavers, and and as you can see, he has bravery on. So if he hits if he hits Bosch, it's gonna be about thousand damage with the ram, as you can see. This time it's supposed to be a little bit less than thousand, but he can hit for like I I've seen them hit for like thousand and eighty damage at least. Yeah, again, I'm getting, I'm a little bit low on HP, so throwing a high potion. Just to make sure that these abaddons don't kill me. They they are kind of like crusaders, they hit for about the same, same amount as the crusaders do do. Uh, if you want to, you can, uh, you can turn the battle speed on slowest here, but it doesn't do that much, so it's... You can do it if you want to, but it's not gonna help you that much. So here you can I can see I'm checking where the enemy is. Uh there's some there's one or two enemies that spawn in this room. There are Bunes and and they deal a ton of damage. Like they can one shot me uh from full HP. But if they do, they are the last enemies that you have to run past. So if Bosch dies, you just uh Switch out, switch, but switch to but switch to Balthier and just keep running. Um, so hit the wall, run past the Bune, and I was fortunate enough that he did not hit me. Uh, he, if he untargets you, you can bring out your main party. Uh, but if you're if you're worried about reflect time and you have already cast reflect then just wait until the next room before you bring out the party and by main party i mean the party you use for the next fight which is about fear of fran and ash so once you reach this room take out balfir ash and Pe sorry not fran i meant penelo so bring out balfir ash and penelo and then do switch uh the gambits for uh, uh, bio and then uh, throw you want to revive Redes and if you do it in this room you want to do it with Balthier um, I need to explain that one the thing as well uh, if, yeah if you do it in this room you want to do it with Balthier if you do it in another room uh, in the previous room, then you can throw the Phoenix down with Ash or Pinello. Uh, but here, I re I use the Phoenix down on Redas, and how the how where Redas spawns is actually based on uh, which way you are holding the analog stick, the left analog stick when uh when Redas gets revived. So I hold, so I hold the I hold the analog stick. To the left for enough time that uh, Redas will spawn in that direction. So that that's a little trick you can do. So that's why I took that little side step to the left. It was to spawn. It was to. It was that Redas won't spawn in my way. Saves incredibly small amount of time. Time. And then you want to uh, ready up immobilize. So again, immobilize timing is pretty tight. So if you, if if this is if this place is too tight for you, you can do it at the start of next screen as well, um, or you can do it even later if you really want to. But uh, how it works for for me, this place works. 
So if you take if you tend to take a little bit longer, then use it in the other. Use it later. But yeah, you want to immobile anyway before the fight. You want to immobilize and reflect Redas. Let's immobilize again so that Redas will not break. Uh, this time it will be sleep instead of confuse. But either way, you want you want that to happen. And once the reflect and immobilizes are both in action, you can flee and open the door. So then, uh, this uh, this setup, we need to we have two. Uh, we have three objectives in this setup. Uh, one is to decoy Balfir, which is technically optional. You 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 don't have to decoy, but I but because it doesn't cost any time, why not? And you also want to. Okay, I guess there are four things you want to do. There's the decoy. Uh, you need to reflect uh, Balfir. And you need to you need to turn Ash and Penelope's gambits on, and you want to uh, set your cursor on sleep so you can immediately cast sleep on Fenrir. And Ash is the only one who has decoy, so Ash is the one using decoy. But there's a little trick you can do here, but you have to be really fast to not lose any time. In fact, I have never managed to do it without losing any time so but i think it's possible but you have to be like perfect with your menuing but even still you want to do it even if you lose that little bit of time because it's faster than doing another menu uh, but anyway what you do is first you make sure that your your green magic um uh, your green magic cursor is on sleep then you make sure that your time magic uh, cursor is on reflect. Then you go to arcane magic and cast decoy with ash on Balthier. And while the decoy is charging, you turn on ash's gambits, which I forgot to do currently. Then you tell Penelo to reflect Balthier. And because I forgot to uh, do the gambit, I had to. I had to. Uh, Pause for a second. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use the decoy, then turn on Ash's Gambit, then use the Reflect on Balthier, and then turn on Penelope's Gambit. And then set your cursor on the green magic. Uh, and then you can, if you do it perfectly, I think you can get, you can flee before uh, you take your, web, you take your battle stance. But yeah, you have have to make sure your cursor is on green magics if you're doing this on active. Uh, if you're new, just do the start and wait at first at least. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to cast sleep on Fenrir as soon as possible. And if you decide to go without decoy, you have to like you have to run you can't run immediately back. Either way, you can't run you can't run straight back. Uh, for some reason, for a reason I will I will show you in a second. Uh, but but you want you want to go a little bit to the left and then be back. But in if you have if you don't have decoy, then you have to go a little bit to the front so that Fenrir for sure targets Balfir and it's that and then the movement is a little bit tighter. And if you go. I think you can do the same movement with without decoy, but if you accidentally go a little bit too much, uh, to if you go a little bit too much backwards, um, you will. Uh, uh, Fenrir might target someone someone other than both here. So the objective here is that Fenrir always starts with whale, and whales very annoying in it in that it's a multi-target um it's a it's a aoe it's it basically kills ash penelo and redas and balfir it it like kills kills the whole party if it hits you so well 
whale is um for for whale, requ whale requ requires four slots in the ability queue or the in the effect capacity and um so ash and the strat is to get sleep off before he uses whale so ash and penelo are casting bio and fran or, or balfier will be casting sleep and uh so the the problem is that whale is instant so you have to run back because Fenrir is tar targeting Balfir, you have to stay out of range of uh, Whale until Sleep gets into action. So that's why you run backwards uh, while Ash and Penelope charge the Bios. So that's 2 plus 2 is 4 and the Sleep will be the 5th. Fifth. Um, fifth. So now, now the Whale is clogged in the ATB, or Whale is clogged in the... Uh, there's not enough effect capacity for the whale to go off, and then he falls asleep before he can use it. So that's the idea, initial idea, idea of the first first part of the fight. Uh, but you have to walk left a little bit. Um, thank you for the bits, Larid. You have to walk left a little bit, because if you go straight down, then Fenrir might go this way, and if and then sh he, would st he would stop here, and even though Redas is immobilized, uh, he Fenrir might be in range of Redas' attacks, so... Uh, and then Redas would, a would attack Fenrir, and Fenrir would, would uh, wake, up, wake up, so that would be a really bad thing. So that's why you took to that's why you take a couple of steps to left before running backwards. But you can't go left too much or the whale will hit you. So it's it's pretty tight, but it's very consistent once you learn how to do it. Anyway, uh then you want to run back to uh, to the girls. And if you're on ATB active, you can use Traveler. Uh, for some extra damage with Balfir, like as you can see, it dealt like two thousand and three hundred damage. That's just that's like one one less by or half less bios you have to cast, so it saves a minimal amount of time. Uh, also, sleep will not last long enough uh, for the end of the fight, but you can uh, but you can refresh sleep. So you want to do it twice if you're on active. If you're on ATB weight and don't want to switch for active, uh, then you can. Then it if you do if you time time the sleep so that it happens when it's at around half HP. Then it, even one uh, sleep cast should be enough. But if you if you're on if you're on active, why not to do why not do two to be extra extra safe. Also, you if if you are not gonna save before uh, say sit sit say you are not gonna save before sit two or anything like that, you can already start setting up for sit two by uh, having Balfir attack himself. So I usually do a couple of attacks, then I cast sleep, and then I do a couple of more attacks, and then cast sleep again, and then uh, you want Balfir's HP. You want Balfir's HP to be uh, less than like 115. Uh, because the goal is for Balfir to be able to kill himself with a single blizzard. And that deals at least... A blizzard deals at least like 115 HP. I don't know what the exact minimum roll is, but... Anyway, 74 HP uh, he for sure. I'm running in circles here just because. And that's and, and yeah, you just wait for the girls to finish Fenrir off. But there are a couple of things that you need to know about this fight. 
First is that Balfir has to be level 12. If Balfir is level 13, you cannot underflow Fenrir. Or you cannot underflow sleep on Fenrir. Uh, in that case, there are two things you can do. Uh, if, it, or if you accidentally level up Balfir to level 13, there are a couple of things you can do. Uh, one is you can license sleep on either Ash or Penelo. Uh, probably Ash, since uh, Penelo could actually use the LP. And, um, or maybe Penelo, because Penelo might be closer on the license board. I don't know. Either way, you can license it for either Ash or Penelo and have that character cast sleep. But then, and, uh, but there's two things to that. Uh, first, you need to have you need to have um, the whoever is a third party member needs to be doing something. Like in that case, you would probably probably use Bosch instead of Puff here. And what you would have to do at the start, you would cast Immobilize with instead of Sleep, you would cast Immobilize with Puff here. Or sorry, immobilize with Bosch, not to immobilize, but just to um, do something that consumes two two effect capacity, so that you can get to the total of five with the sleep from Penelo, and uh, and that and and so sleep bio and immobilize would work as well. Uh, another thing you could do is if you have a lot of money, you can. Um, you can uh, buy sleep, sleep ga for. Uh, you can buy sleep ga in Balfenheim and uh, license sleep ga for, uh, ba for Balfir. Uh, as you can see, that's quite a bit of licenses, but Balfir should have no trouble being able to afford it. So you would pick up, like, Confuse. Um, just looking at it quickly. Looks like confused decoy. Then these three licenses would be the would be enough for sleep gun. Uh, would be the cheapest way. So yeah, that's that's something something you can do, and then underflow sleep guy instead because sleep guy has a smaller percent uh, to hit. Because it's AoE. Um, and uh, if you have, if you uh, if you ever have to recover in this fight, uh, it's important that you revive Balfir and have Balfir put Fenrir back to sleep as soon as possible. And then just, um, if Redas, for whatever reason, dies, don't worry about reviving Redas. Just uh, continue with three characters. And that's most things about Immobilize. And uh, you don't want to revive Redas because Redas will not be immobilized and then... Uh, then uh, he will go and wake up Fenrir. So just, if you, if you ever have to recover, just have Balfir, Ash and Penelo finish the fight off, just to revive those three, and, and Bosch for LP, but um, whatever. Anyway, um, if, you, if, you did what, if you do what I do, um, Ash and Penelo's Reflect should wear off pretty soon after the fight ends. So right after this door, you want to reflect, re-reflect them. And then um, you can tell Ash and Penel. You can tell Ash and Penel to cure Bosch as well if you want to. Uh, in that screen, but it's a little bit tight if you want to. If you want to do that, uh, then in this screen, uh, there was also another screen earlier where an entite called Undine entite can spawn, and if he spawns, it's you are just unlucky. And uh, he's, he's default aggressive, so 
he he will start using like water gun stuff and he will kill party members and be a big annoyance. But just you will see it will happen to you at some point and then then you will know. But it's like you just have to run away from him and uh revive people. But if if you see him like well, actually no. I'm not gonna say that. But yeah, uh then in this in this room you want to decoy Balthier and Penelo can cure Redas or something. Or Bosch. Doesn't matter. Uh but yeah, you need to touch this thing. And then um there's cutscene skip after this one. And then af as soon as you have touched it, uh, you want to remove Balthier from your party and uh, bring out Bosch. Now, if you if you are planning on saving before uh, before Sid 2 or Hashmal, uh, don't worry about decoying Balthier. Uh, but what you want to do is uh, take out Bosch and remove mirror mail so he can protect himself protect himself again and then you want to get usually you already have the hp plus 200 but because of the Daedalus uh killing himself and the mateus losing half mateus lp uh bosch wasn't able to afford it in this run but you should also get the battle lore and the hp hp lore plus 500 and if you can afford it uh you need at this point you need um 100 and uh, 115 lp to be able to afford um dispel for bosch which is which is quite handy to have you you don't need it yet but if you can get it if you can afford it here then this will be your last licensing of the run but dispel would be this license this dispel would be this license and you can get it uh in two ways you can get this this and this which is 115 lp or you can get this this and this which is 125 lp and getting it this way would be faster but getting it this way um uh, getting it getting it this way is cheaper so if you can afford it you, if you can afford it by this way, but not this way, then go uh, this way, but otherwise go always go this way. Uh, there's also these two licenses that you might want to get later. If you have, um, if you picked up the Ensanguined Shield in Feywood, then you want to get those, two, those licenses later. So in that case, it wouldn't be the last licensing, but it's something... Uh, then you want to get this license for Ash. Um, usually Ash already has the gam channeling here, but um, again, because of the Daedalus uh, killing himself, uh, Ash didn't have channeling in this run uh, until this point. You don't really need it, but it's it's something that it's something. Uh, but you want this magic lore for Ash. It's this even this is not critical. So if she can't afford it, don't worry about it. But uh, it's nice to get, and for Penelo as well. And for Penelo, you can get these two licenses as well if you can afford it. Uh, but again, because Dedal is killing himself, uh, she was not able to afford the magic lore over here. But in my experience, in my experience, she some she sometimes can afford this license and sometimes can't. It depends on how your chalice go. Even if you, even if she gets all LP, and yeah, then I wasn't sure how much LP it actually was, so I wanted to try if I could get it, but I, I didn't have enough LP, as I mentioned, it's hundred and eleven or hundred and fifteen, and I only only had ninety one LP. Uh, also, there's one more license that you would get in that uh, license menu. Uh, I, I will show what the license is laid, 
I will show exactly where that license is later, but I will mention now that it's uh, France Reflect. So if you get the Dispel for Bosch in that menu, also get the Reflect for Fran. But if you don't get it, then you can get the Reflect when you, whenever you get the Dispel for Bosch. Uh, so if the Entite is around somewhere around here, if you really want to avoid it, you can run around the other way to avoid the Entite. But I don't know, I would just YOLO past it. Probably remove Ash and Penelo from the party and just YOLO. Um, you want to heal both Bosch and Redas. Um, yeah, you want them both to be on full HP for the next part, but it's whatever. And then you use the elevator and there's another cutscene skip. Now, uh, in this next screen, there's the last save point before Hashmal. So if you want to save before Hashmal, then do, do so. Um, Then you have, or you have to do it here. And of course you have to do like, you have to recreate down and stuff again, like every time if you save in the middle of a dungeon, but uh, that's, that you can figure that out on your own. Uh, but you, but what I do is if I have an extra float mode, I can, I use, I have a girl throw it on Redas and then immediately touch the waystone so that no one else, especially you, you especially don't want Bosch to get float at this point, but you, but you kind of do want to, you kind of do want Redas to have float because uh, Redas, otherwise Redas can trigger some traps, but then you touch the waystone to cancel the rest of the float mode, but only do that if you have at least two float modes remaining, do not use your last float mode. And then you want to protect Vaughn or Bosch. And uh, if you want to, you can also cure Bosch. Being, I'm being careful that those enemies don't uh, see me before I take out, take away Ash and Penelo and equip the mirror, put the mirror mail back on. And here I also want to t use the battle speed slow because these bombs, bomb type enemies, uh, they tend to uh, knock back. And if they knock back, then uh, if they knock back and you are on the fastest battle speed, then uh, five of five of them can hit you in the next room, and then that's uh, Bosch will Bosch is pretty much dead if that happens. So yeah, you use that the uh, the black waystone there, and then uh, you move forward, and then here. In this room, there are two ways to go, and I will show you the faster way. And yeah, there are five, five enemy, five, uh, five of these things, and they use lunch. Uh, their lunch deals about five hundred HP if you are, if you have protect on, and about seven hundred if you if you skip protect. Anyway, you want to go here. This is a fake wall. You hit it, and. Uh, there's a trap underneath this, or actually I don't think it's underneath this chest, but there is a trap somewhere around here. Uh, so you want to hug the right wall to avoid that trap. And then you use the waystone here. Um, then Underneath this chest, there is a healing trap that can spawn. I picked up the chest. It's a, uh, I think it's a 50-50 chance of either being 999 gil or an elixir, but it's not guaranteed to spawn. Either way, the healing trap beneath this is nice. And uh, there are also traps in this hallway, which is why Redus is floated. But by, I think even if Fredas is not floated, by hugging the left wall, most of the time you should be able to avoid them. Then you uh, hit those two fake walls and take the red, uh, red sigil here, the red waystone. stone. 
and you will be teleported right next to um two arrow knights and then you just take this uh purple or pink or whatever this color is there is also a purple one which is why i call it pink even though it's a little bit more purple in my opinion but whatever and and then you, when you tell up then you get to this area and you run uh towards that fake wall over there uh you bring out ash and penelo at this point so we can start setting up for the next fight um uh, i you, it does there are a bunch of little menus and it doesn't matter which order you do them so i just did the uh i just do the equipment part or the first equipment part which was uh, equipping cherry staves and removing mirror mail and then uh but it is important that you switch your battle speed on uh fastest so here if redas is not on full hp you want to heal redas to full um but you also want to berserk him so you want to Berserk is priority number one, and healing Redas to full is priority number two. Uh, use Cure for that, if uh, Cure is enough to bring Redas to full HP. And if not, you can throw an Expotion, unless you are really low on Expotions. But if Redas is on full HP, you can Reflect Redas. And nice thing about Reflecting, even if you don't have Float Mode on Redas, uh, because he's Berserked, he will take out his weapons, so if you do this fast enough, uh, everyone except Bosch is out of range of this trap. And this trap is a guaranteed Petrify trap. So it gives Bosch Petrify, which is exactly what you want. The only reason not to uh, hit this trap is if you don't have any gold needles. You need one gold needle for this next fight. So do not hit the trap if you don't have that gold needle. So then uh, you want to take Penelo and Ash out of your party because there's an there's a rare game that can spawn. It has a 20% 20 percent chance of spawning right after... It will spawn right behind you where, when you spawn in this next area. And that's why you want to have Redas at full HP as well so that that enemy will not hit you. You will immediately see it, so if there's no enemy, you just uh, take Ash and Penelo back in your and back into your party, and switch their gambits to Aroga. Uh, then you set up Bosch, so protect and decoy Bosch, and make sure that if you didn't reflect uh, Redas before, uh, that Redas is reflected. And also, you need to make sure that the float mode you use hits everyone. And then you turn on Ash and Penelo's gambits and equip re-equip the mirror mail. So to recap the setup, uh, Penelo and Ash need to have gambits on Aeroga and be equipping cherry staves. Uh, Bosch needs to have the mirror mail on. Redas needs to be berserked and reflected, and preferably on full HP. Uh, Ash and Penelo need to be on critical HP and reflected. And Bosch needs to be petrified. Uh, so that the petrify counter is somewhere between 7 and 5. When you enter the fight. Uh, the petrify is for damage reduction. Because Hashmal hits hard and can combo. Uh, Bosch also needs to be protected and decoyed. And everyone has to have float on. That's the setup for this fight. So then you get a small scene here, which you can skip forever for whatever reason. And then after that, there's a cutscene that you can skip. And that cutscene is probably probably shorter than this scene that you can't skip. But oh well. So Hashmal. Hashmal is really just gambits on and you win. Like uh, the gambit should be on at the start of the fight. You want to move Ash and Penelo forward a little bit at the start of this fight to make sure that Redas doesn't run run too far away from them 
so you can get all four reflects at the start. But you, you do that and uh, then you just uh, wait until Hashmal uses Roxor. Now because of the float, Roxor will miss. But after that, after Roxor, wait for Ash and Penelope's Aerogas. And then uh, after these Aerogas have charged, use the Gold Needle. So that the Gold Needle happens after the Aerogas. Hashmal should hit you one more time. And then Hashmal will ready Petalgrai. Uh, Bash should Gold Needle himself. And Ash and Penelo should get another round of Aerogas off before Quakecha. If Quakecha happens, uh, it's not the end of the world because it will miss everyone due to the float. But Bash's decoy might run out and Hashmal will st start just killing people if um, if Bash is if Bash either dies or uh, if Bash either dies or um, loses decoy. You have to make sure that you get the golden ne golden needle or gold needle off before uh, Bosch turns into stone. So if you are a little bit um, if you are not as uh, high on the uh, petrify count as I was, and you it's a little it's a lot tighter for you, uh, you can you can get the gold needle off before the arrow the round of arrow gush that I showed you. But then uh, Hashmal will get another, will get an attack off without Petrify, uh, which will be fine if un unless he combos. But just it, just just pay attention to that and make sure that Bosch does not turn into stone. But anyway, uh, that's Hashmal, and that's the end of this part. So. Um, I'll see you in the next part.